It would be so nice to add this little thing right over here. So let me acquire a whole new hobby for this one thing. We're gonna stop me there. I want everyone to know that I have been told in no uncertain terms that if I want era-appropriate handmade bobbin lace, that I better learn how to make it. It also happened to be said so many times and in so many ways that it now feels personal, but like a challenge. Like, when told there is no amount of money that I could be given to put down my own projects and do a commission piece because of the volume of time involved here, what I really want to say is, okay, bet. I personally don't have Hermes money. However, I'm going to say that if someone offered you Hermes money for your work, you absolutely would be figuring out how to make that happen for you. Which leads me to think, if you have a skill that you don't share with others, what's the price point that tips you to being willing to sell your time, skill, or product? Which then leads me to this. Fine. I'll sell what I sew, but here's the thing. I have Hermes custom-made prices, and you probably don't want to do that. I also don't do custom, and like Hermes, I'll let you know what you can have. Like, someone else can absolutely do it cheaper and give you what you actually wanted. But really, someone else is probably going to be able to do this better for you than me. However, what do I actually know about someone else's budget or what they're willing to spend? Like, I'm not buying a Hermes purse. I'm just not. But I'd totally spend that money on something else that I personally consider wildly special. If I paid myself $20 an hour and estimated an average of 20 hours a week for 11 weeks, and my son says that I am way low on my hours here, but he's also young and terrible with time. But I'm not sure. 20 seems low, but probably near the truth. Maybe. Let's just use that. So why $20 an hour? Because I don't support utter poverty minimum wage. I also should note that the satin typically would be $700 more. I got insanely lucky regarding that sale. Add in another 80 for boning. That's what she said. So, do you sell what you create? In general, the answer is no, because what I am doing is cost prohibitive to most. But that's not the question that needs to be focused on. The real question is this. What would you need to be paid for you to let go of one of your creations? Do put value on your work and how you got there. Do value your time. Do value your skill and background and all of the research and practice that went into it. Please note that I got the satin on crazy sale and that if I hadn't, this price tag goes up a full 700. I don't have that sewn in yet, but let me back up. I love that. That was not planned. And I'm in love. I'll get those set in tomorrow. I need to do something. I, I just don't like that it is too easy for my petticoat to show. I want to show something about uh, the mannequin. We don't see that very often in my uh, sewing. And this is why right here. No matter what, the dimensions of this mannequin don't resemble me very well. Uh, I dip in far more and faster right here, and then I become a tube from my waist up. So I'm, I'm basically like this, up, and then I go out real fast. It's just the way I'm built. We're all built different. We're human. And sewing allows us to, to just fit our clothing to our body and be done with it. Don't change the body to the clothing. Change the clothing to fit the body. All right. I want to do a flat bow up here and build this up a little bit more. I keep looking at the neckline. I feel like, one, I really need to iron that again. And two, I really feel like I need to... Uh, it, it feels like it's... I feel like it's missing something, so I'm not done yet but as you can see it is dark out and the dog is saying mom it's it's time for bed it's time for bed all right i'm gonna pick this up tomorrow this has been a lot harder and a lot slower than than i was anticipating okay i lied i stayed up a little bit longer and i threw more fabric at it now 
don't don't judge this isn't supposed to be like that it's just that it's it would be like much thinner this is like a full six yards wrapped up i just don't want to cut anything think flounce here much much lighter okay delicate think of me as encouraging you to play to tuck material wherever you want, to think about it, to see what's even possible, and to experiment. Because you know what this cost me? Nothing, nothing at all. I have cut nothing, I have done nothing, irreversible, nothing is even sewn down. So yeah, and what I'm gonna do is now go to sleep. Today is the day. I am really hoping that I can finish this. I have enjoyed this project probably more than most of the projects that have come before it, simply for the fact that apparently I really wanted to sew this. So this has been an exceptionally positive experience for me, but it has now been going on for more than two months, solidly over eight weeks now, from beginning with uh, all of the stuff that has to go under it. At this point, I have I've done the bare minimum. Bare minimum being no hoop lines and your petticoat isn't showing, bare minimum. As of now, I took apart all the stuff that I was sh uh, messing with late last night and that you've already seen and obviously you can see everything just sort of went like that and now I need to make some choices. Fluffy Bunny Universe, I would already have the skills and tools to make those shaped rosettes, flowers with silk and I would do a string of those across the bodice. I think that personally that's where my aesthetic actually lands. Practically speaking, however, I don't have any of that. I don't have the skills, I don't have the time, and I certainly don't have the money to invest in a whole new uh, art form project. If I'm going to be doing fl uh, flowers, um, it will be in the way that I've always made them with little folds and we sew everything together, put a little pr a pretty something something in the middle and you slap it on something and then you sew it there. That's what we'll do. I really love this, but I, I don't think it's for this one. I keep on going back and forth on a pretty wild level regarding these. In so many ways, I just want to sew this here and be done. On the other hand, I can already tell that although I appreciate it, I will go to an event and someone will take a look at it and go, you have modern, very, very modern tassels on your really, really, really not modern not even a modern interpretation like this. This should, as of right now, still be able to easily walk through a time portal. And this would not necessarily lay me in prison, but definitely cause problems when I try to explain where I got them. Why I'm so worried about time travel, we're not entirely sure. I get there's a lot to worry about in general, but for whatever reason, time travel seems to be the top worry I have. Okay. So this is what's gonna happen. I really liked the pleating that was from here to here. I thought that was very nice. I'm gonna get that attached, hence the, the bodice being off the mannequin. I'm gonna attach that and I'm gonna start right here with the uh, the caramel color and we'll just start to have the pleats coming down. I'll make sure both of those are nice and even and it'll get attached to the bodice directly. I am trying to figure out what I wanna do here. I'm actually thinking, funny enough, um, either a an attached poof that goes right over this, an attached bow that goes right over this, or a modesty panel. I really like this. 
and I want to show off this. I don't necessarily want to cover this with anything, hence the, br uh, the brown silk chiffon, gone. But I do feel like this could support something right here because it dives in and it's flat. So we could do a poof of some sort right here. Poof. No one will know. No one needs to know. I feel like I need something here. There just needs to, this will be number three. I'll have to figure something out here. Okay, I'm going to sew, and you get the luxury of editing magic, so you're going to get this cool montage, and then all of a sudden, I'm going to be standing there with a finished dress, and it's going to be so exciting. I really wish I could just sort of, you know, and in real life, that would happen. I mean, maybe if I... like what I've done. Don't drain your batteries, recharge them. Exactly. If your hobbies drain your energy, you've got, energy. they're not your hobby. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay. I think, I think that I have the bodice managed. I've got my cascade of silk rosettes with pearl um, uh, 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 inserts in the middle of the flower. What would you even call that? I don't even know what that's called. Okay, so it's inside the flower. It's decorative, it's pearl. Everything is silk. Everything has been bound with silk. The thread was silk. So this is a silk gown. Uh, this is as, again, uh, historically accurate as I possibly can with the skills that I have. If I was really awesome, I would have learned how to tat and then done some sort of tatted decorative thing lace on here. Or maybe I would have taught myself how to do um, the, 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 the lace, you know, the, the, the thing with the, the this and the this and the everything. And I don't have that yet. So, and I decided that pausing this to learn that to then do this was not in my best interest, although I want you to know that I was totally tempted. All right. I love this. I love this. I really like this. This just seems, the more that I stare at it, the more I really like the dimensions off of this. Again, I'm really trying to make this gown mine, where I look at it and go, ah, yes, I get to wear that. Okay. And the colors, they are perfect for me. Um, a ball gown for that time period. The lighter colors would have been considered to be, um, were, were considered to be ooh and everything. But the truth is, is that I still am a redhead and I can get washed out very, very quickly. And this is just, this just is perfect for me. Okay. I love it. Let's be done with the bodice. I'm going to reserve the right to lose my mind at any point in the future, learn how to tat or lace knit something or come up with some velvet trim. I don't know, but I reserve the right to add something to this in the future that also elevates this. But I'm not going to do that right now because this 
The goal today is to be done, to be deeply done, to be utterly done with this because this needs to be done. Emotionally, I need this done. So we're going for the simplest, most straightforward, and also no, sh no, no shortcuts. This isn't a shortcut, this works. It adds to it, it totally looks right, and there's no problems. Okay, am I in frame? Okay, let's discuss this. That was a test, okay. This is the part that, I've got a lot of different options and I am very sure that all of you have opinions. Please feel free to put in the comments what you think I should do, knowing full well that by the time I read it, I will not have, I, this will be done and that there will be no, anyway. But I love your opinions because there will be future dresses. Let me know what you would have done because I could take more ivory and bring this down here. Or do I do the green and do double down on that? Do I bring more gold into this? Do I create a sash that goes over it that is weighted at the bottom and will keep this in? Do I go to the inside and put weights in here and gently in the inside sew this down in a couple of areas in order for this to get closed up? Do I roll this entire thing, do this, and pretend it's something else entirely different than what it is. Do I spend another day, create a whole bunch of roses, because these, I ever say, if I ever, ever meet someone who says, yeah, uh, these are handmade rosettes, and they're like everywhere, you have my attention. You have my attention and my, oh, I had a thing. I had a thing for this. Okay, I do have a thing, but I don't know where it is. It was a cream rosette that was expertly made and they were all over my wedding dress. That one fell off at some point during the day. Someone handed, I, I think it was like stupid early. We had no idea where it was coming from. And I was not about to pause and like sew things back on. So I just sort of kept it over to the side. It's, I can find that. I just don't, I'm going to attach it to a hair comb and it's gonna be a hair piece. It's gonna be a hair piece for this because I think that's gonna be absolutely glorious and perfect for this. I would be absolutely stunned if it does not match. So that's gonna be the, and, and I've been waiting to use that for like 15 years, like 15 and a half years, okay. As you can see, I, I, I'm like, uh, everything is covered in thread and my hair is up and I've got no makeup because I just can't handle it anymore. So I am not even remotely screen ready. So you need to just look at this and just don't even look at me. Okay, I am the frantic seamstress who just wants to be done. This book, this is the one that really shows you how to do your decorative uh, fabric manipulation into these really cool things. Out of every single book that I would suggest to buy, it, I mean, as much as everyone now go, ooh, because if you know, you know, this is pretty good. But I could have sewn this without that technically. But this, might actually bring this item up in a way that really makes sense. So I really, 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 really suggest this book in general. And I suggest this book in general because it keeps you away for, for any time period. When I say general, I mean like time periods, just general time periods, because if you're trying to do more historically accurate things, you don't, you're, you don't have access to the lace. You don't have access necessarily to uh, easily complementary colors that you would have been looking for. Sometimes you're working with a budget and if you get another yard of whatever it is you're working with, you can do your decorative, you can do your decorative things 
and still match and it was accessible. See, the, a lot of the things that we do with historical recreation and when we start veering away from the accuracy is because of an accessibility problem. It's not because people have decided that they believe that the modern things that you could buy at Joanne's works. It's just that that's what's available and sometimes we just want to have something fancy. So I land on both. I, I land very firmly in the world that you, you get to sew whatever you want to sew and anyone who's complaining to you about historical accuracy, the only per the only person that should be complaining about historical accuracy is the person who sewed it and it needs to be their thing or if you joined a group and there are standards. Now that's a whole different thing. I mean, but know that not everyone's going to be able to meet that standard. Okay. I'm rambling because I'm tired. I need to sew now. Okay, I am, I'm good with this. This now looks like this exaggerated bow. It covers everything up. It's not a separate piece. I've sewn it to the bodice, so it's not gonna end up like getting lost in a closet or something like that. I don't wanna do that. I want things to be very carefully secured to the dress so that this has the ability to be worn for a very long time. I have received comments regarding how I'm doing finishing on the inside and that I don't have any rough edges and that everything is bound. Of course it is. It's 2023 and this dress, I want it to last like until I die and then I can hand it down to a favorite human. Like I don't, this dress is not built to be taken apart and then redone in a new season's um, expression of fashion. This dress is what it is and it is not going to be redone at any point, nor is it something that I'm okay with falling apart after a few uses. I want this to be an incredibly sturdy dress because the purpose of this dress is that I never have to sew it again. That's part of the beauty of corsets because if I lace myself down or anyone else down to a 24 inch waist, they have a very, they or me have a very good shot at actually being able to wear this dress and be comfortable. I'm going to consider this done. In fact, I'm going to consider the back of this dress done. This is the sum total of green fabric I have left. Gold or caramel toffee colored. And I have this, I'd say one yard. Yeah, about one yard, little over a yard. And I'm feeling protective of it because I know that if I ever have a spill, a stain, a problem, or I want to make a fan or some other accessory that it would be nice to have this for, I have a feeling I'm going to want this. This material I should be protective of and store it actually with this. So what I'm going to do to protect like the, the raw edges that want to ravel, I'll find a bag, I'll put it in the bag, along with any other spare uh, fabric that I have here that goes with this. I might even put the thread in there and I'm just going to tie it to like whatever hanger or box or whatever storage system I end up with. This gets stored with this. It's not going back into the sewing closet. That feels like a bad idea. And I have this amount of silk ribbon left. I would like to let you know that silk ribbon versus polyester ribbon. 
that that's a whole different thing. I am a major silk fan at this point. Um, I love working with it. I love wearing it. I really like working with it. Like I like how silk behaves with the machine. I like the way that it irons. I like the way that it folds. I like the way that it poofs. I have had nothing but a positive experience on this and at any given turn, I'm gonna do my best to continue to buy natural fabrics because, well, then I also started thinking about it. I'm like, well, if it's not a natural fabric, it's, plas it's plastic. It's plastic that doesn't degrade and goes into a landfill eventually. I'm not sure I wanna participate in that because I actually have the luxury and the privilege to not participate in that. I think I wanna do that. Man, I really like these roses. I like the contrast. I feel that's very, very nice. I have one thing left. This is a major deal for me, and I'm very excited about this. I gotta figure out what I'm doing with this. I think I'm gonna eat dinner and think about this, pin some stuff to it so that I can look at it randomly and see which one I like the best. I'm gonna assume that the next shot is me like making the thing that goes on here and then poof, it'll be done.